Okay, deep breaths in and deep breaths out. Let's let this settle just for a little bit. Because the Detroit Red Wings ended up playing a game against the Nashville Predators earlier today, and they lost with a score of one to nothing. And realistically, when you talk about one nothing games, sure, the Wings got shut out. Sure, they didn't have a shot for the first 15 minutes of the third period. Sure, you could say, oh, where was the offense, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, when it's a one nothing game, where one mistake, one bad shift can cost you the entire 60 minutes, you can't really go out there and hate too bad. One nothing against a great team like Nashville? Man oh man, what an entertaining hockey game. But unfortunately, that's the way it goes. One team has to win, and one team has to lose. And for the most part, I feel like the better team did end up winning, especially in that third period. The Nashville Predators had themselves one goal scored by Philip Forsberg, assisted by Roman Yossi and Gustav Nyquist. And the goal by Forsberg was very weird. It comes with about six minutes to go in the third period. That's all she wrote. one nothing. That's it. And the goal is a little bit of a scrambly one. The puck is loose in the Red Wings zone. There are a few guys just trying to swipe away at it. Eventually, it's Forsberg who gets it freed right in front, and he goes upstairs, glove side, on Alex Lyon, who admittedly played very well in this game. Lyon made 31 saves and 32 shots against for a 969 save percentage. What else can you want out of this guy? Meanwhile, for the Nashville Predators, UC Saro stopped all 22 shots that he had faced, and three of them happened to be on the power play. The Predators scored their only goal of the game in a very scrambly play, and a lot of people, especially on the Red Wings sub, all over Red Wings Twitter, and in the Instagram comments, everywhere online you'll see, Red Wings fans are blaming one guy, seemingly, for this loss. Former Montreal Canadiens, Edmonton Oilers, and Pittsburgh Penguins defenseman, Jeff Petrie. Because, man, has this video been a long time coming, eh? You know, it's unfortunate because he was the guy, Jeff Petrie was, who kind of had the last opportunity to maybe swipe at the puck or cause some interference before Philip Forsberg took the game-winning shot and scored the game-winning goal. Petrie was right there, in front of the mix, and he wasn't able to get a touch on the puck. You could say he kind of screened Alex Lyon in that sequence, and it's very unlucky because when it comes to the way Petrie played tonight, as well as, you could even say, the rest of the season, that malfunction of a play, which cost the Red Wings the only goal of the game, pretty much seems like a constant that we have seen out of Petrie for most of the year. There were the game stats posted after the Red Wings and the Predators game concluded, and if you take a look at the scores for each of these Red Wings players, the worst player on the ice by far was Jeff Petrie, who had a net negative in on-ice offense and on-ice defense for the Wings. And a lot of the comments are going out there and saying similar things like, yeah, Jeff Petrie was really bad, Petrie has been performing poorly all year, why the hell is Justin Hall not in the lineup? Like, there's no way Justin Hall is as bad as Petrie has been playing right now. It's all Petrie, Petrie, Petrie. And I'm going to go out there and say, like, just for the sake of, you know, bringing this game back into the reins of reality, a one nothing game is not going to be won or lost by any one individual player. At the end of the day, the Wings offense didn't score any points, which is unfortunate. They looked good. They had some momentum, they had some opportunities, but they could not beat UC Soros. And in the moments where they kind of sat back and relaxed, especially at the start of the third period and the end of the first, you could say, Detroit needed to get a little bit more out of their guys. And unfortunately, one player is not responsible for all of those results not coming to fruition. Sure, the one goal that was scored was kind of a direct result of Jeff Petrie's inability to touch the puck in front of the net, but... At the same time, the Wings themselves just let this game get away from them. And it's unfortunate because as we talked about in yesterday's video, this is it. Like, the Wings have so few games remaining on the season, and 
a lot of them are going to be against teams that could either play them off in the first round of the playoffs if the Wings maintain that second wildcard spot, or they're going to be against teams that are fighting Detroit for that wildcard spot. Washington is going to be a huge must-win game. The Wings need to take two points out of that one, and they cannot allow the Caps to get onto the board and score themselves even at least an overtime loser point. Absolutely nothing is necessary. And guess what? The Wings play the Caps twice. The Wings play the Canadians twice to end off the year. Jeff Petrie playing off against his former team. Oddly enough, when it comes to Jeff Petrie and the way he's performed, you wouldn't really notice this right away just by looking at the raw hard point totals. Petrie's few years in Montreal where he was really good. I mean, he had multiple 40-goal seasons back to back to back to back, and the last one was in 55 games played, which was awesome. Then he got traded over to Pittsburgh, had 31 points in 61 games there, and now in Detroit, he's got 19 points in 62 games and on pace for about 22 over 73, which is not terrible. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but the fact that Jeff Petrie is signed on with the Wings till 2024-2025, even if he's only making $2.3 million against the Wings cap because of the double salary retained, this is not a player that has allowed the Red Wings to get good results on the ice. And that's coming from me, you know, somebody that watched Petrie grow from his Edmonton days into the Canadian system and seeing him be as good as he was. There was a period in Montreal where Petrie was the best offensive defenseman on the team. Shea Weber was like the rock, the brick wall. Edmondson and Sherratt were the other brick walls and supporting towers. But while Jeff Petrie could also man the fort, he could also unleash some offense too. He had his own offensive flair, he could make passes, and once in a while he'd unleash some really wide-angle snipes that would go in off the goalie's helmet. Like he did the Cole Caulfield goal multiple times Jeff Petrie did. It was quite spectacular. But of course, you know, acknowledging the problems with the COVID years and how Petrie wasn't allowed to see his family and everything, they're in Detroit, so there was always a connection there. Good on CVY for doing right by the player by getting this player onto your team, but man, is he the right option the Wings need on their blue line at this stage of the year to help them win hockey games? I get it. Hockey's a team sport. In a one nothing loss, it's hard to blame one individual person, but... In this case, I mean, everybody's talking about that one goal. Hey, if Philip Forsberg just can't shoot the puck, if Petrie's able to get a stick in there, then it's not a one nothing game. It's still a 0-0 game, and who knows what happens in the last three minutes of regulation. If the Red Wings at least got themselves a point, that would have been the best case scenario. Support Alex Lyon with some active sticks and blocking pucks in front of the net. Why don't ya? So at the end of the day, the Wings ended up losing, and I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not Jeff Petrie is the right option moving forward. This is a smaller video compared to the one that we made yesterday, talking about how this is it for Detroit. But now, we're asking, hey, when it comes to fine tinkering the details, fine tinkering the last remaining aspects of this lineup before making the playoffs, do you keep Jeff Petrie in or do you sub him out for Justin Hall? Do you think Hall would be a major upgrade over Petrie at this point? And if so, by how much? Are you a believer in Justin Hall? Do you think Hall is as bad as Jeff Petrie is being depicted out to be right now and therefore wouldn't really make too much of a difference? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the progression of Jeff Petrie from the, let's just say the Canadian system. I mean, we could forget about that one Pittsburgh year that he played from the Canadians until now. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.